Welcome to WealthResearchGroup.com. I'm here at the Sproth Conference again, and I'm here with Byron King, partners with uh, Jim Rickards at the Gold Specular. Byron, how are you? Very good, thanks. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad that you took the time. I want to take uh, a moment here and talk to you about sentiment. What, what would be the gold sentiment right now? We've had, uh, you know, 2011 until uh, 2015, the end of 2015, we've had a brutal bear market, not only for um, the gold price, but for the, uh, for, for the stocks, for juniors, for the uh, you know, large caps. Everything's been down incredibly, 79% for the TXS uh, venture, top to bottom. And uh, then we've seen these uh, rate hikes come along, and at first they made a huge um, they make a, a huge deal for, for the uh, for the case for gold, and right now we've seen Yellen saying that uh, they're not going to raise a lot of uh, they're not going to make a lot of rate hikes not this year. So it's clear takeoff for gold until December, until maybe the the next one comes along. Where do you see this? Uh, how do you see this playing along? Well, there are a couple couple of ways you can have, you can look at it. Different plateaus you want to look at. Yeah. I mean, there's gold the metal, then there's gold investing. You know, the sector. Sure. You know, there's the junior. Uh, sector, which is where we are here at the Sprott Resource Symposium, okay. and then there, you know, then there's the big major guys, the Barracks and the Gold Corps of the world. Okay. Now, in terms of gold itself, mm -hmm. gold sentiment, very dependent on you know the Fed, you know the old "don't fight the Fed" thing. The th thing is that the Fed, the Fed is fighting wars on many fronts, okay. and the Fed doesn't. Uh, the, the Fed is kind of like Germany in World War One or something. It's just you know, it's surrounded by a lot of bad news. Uh, you know, so on the one hand, they want to raise rates. On the other hand, they can't raise rates. On the, I mean, when you look at uh, how is the U.S. economy doing, I mean, it's a mixed bag. You know, the stock market seems to be doing great, but middle America isn't. Uh, the last election sort of showed that. If you haven't figured it out yet, you know, I don't know how, I don't know how else to explain it to you. But the, the Fed has a lot of problems in terms of raising rates. They probably won't be able to raise rates again till December, even if they can do that. Mm -hmm. Will they do it in December or not? I don't know. Throw a dart at the board. Jim Rickards, with whom I work, uh, thinks that there's a 50-50 chance with, you know, probably a tilt over towards the they won't raise rates side okay. for the rest of the year. Uh, other things, though, could come into the picture. I mean, geopolitical events, political events in the U.S. The U.S. itself politically has become very dysfunctional. All of that is, you know, impacting, you know, sentiment for gold. Then you look overseas to major competitors, you know, as the military likes to call them, the, peer, the near peers or the peer competitors, Russia, China. They're buying gold bricks and stacking gold bricks like there's no tomorrow. There's just no two ways about it. They tell you about it. They admit it. They show you the gold bricks. They don't, you know, they're, they're stacking gold. So, uh, you know, figure that out. I'm, I'll be talking about that on Thursday at my talk here at the uh, at the Sprott uh, Symposium. And now, now we get into the other part that where I spend my time, sure. which is the gold, silver stocks. I mean, I'm looking in the junior uh, sector. The sentiment in uh, the gold buying, the, the gold stock buying world, is not ebullient by any means. I mean, there are the hardcore gold bugs, and there's a little bit, bit of positivity, but it's a lot less positive than it was, say, a year ago when, sure. when things were real high. In terms of what's happening at the company level, there are many, many, many companies, and they are represented here at this symposium, who are doing spectacular things in terms of their uh, exploration work in terms of their development work in terms of their early stage uh, production work really good people doing really good things building value and and right now in terms of uh, you know the junior market uh, purchasing for, for shares uh, there are just absolute steals laying around there are two baggers and three baggers and five baggers and eight baggers just 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 sitting at the tables here waiting to be waiting to be acquired and for the right time to come when gold does go up and silver does go up and these things begin to slingshot their way upwards. So uh, with regards to uh, the, uh, the long-term perspective, when people buy these companies that are uh, the junior companies, uh, you know, a, a lot of people, they buy them with a two to three week horizon. What should people be expecting when you buy a junior company at a depressed valuation, when the market is, you know, is hating them, like we have with the G GDX rebalancing, uh, you know, giving opportunities to people. Mm -hmm. What's the, you know, what would be the horizon for, for these companies? Yeah, if, if, you're, if you're buying with a two to three week horizon, I certainly hope that you have some insider knowledge, you know, that you can see, mm -hmm. you can see the ships sailing and the bombers launching, okay. and that you know that tomorrow morning there's going to be a war breaking out somewhere that's going to drive up the price. I hope, you know, I, I hope you know that. Yeah. But, but 
if you're just a normal everyday in, you know uh, investor mm -hmm. speculator because there's sure. nothing wrong with speculation as long as it's informed as if you're just Moderate. a normal informed speculator mm -hmm. uh, when you buy when you buy into these uh, companies you need to understand that you are buying a bargain right now across most of the sector there are a very few companies that I think are close to fully valued okay. there are a lot of companies that are sort of midway value there are many many companies that are just you know ter terrifically undervalued I mean yeah is there a downside risk yeah there's a downside risk you could you know things could, could go down 10 15 20 percent is there an upside risk or an upside uh, jump yeah, yeah there's there's the two and three and five and ten bagger uh, upside you know when the metal prices move when the metal prices move many of the companies around here are absolutely geared leveraged to, uh, to to truly soar and do well what's the what's the price point do you think the mental price point for gold for 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 brokers to be started to, to be uh, um, well this morning this, yeah. this morning when I checked the price of gold it was right around twelve hundred fifty dollars okay. an ounce give or take a buck one way one way or the other um, do you think it, uh, it's, it would it's take 52-week highs? It's worth going in now okay. because there is nothing wrong with this market that another $50 an ounce or certainly $100 an ounce wouldn't cure. At $100 an ounce more of gold, at thirteen fifty yep. gold instead of twelve fifty, yep. a lot of companies that I own in my newsletter mm -hmm. and that, uh, that I n cover, that I follow, that sure. I watch, a lot of those companies are going to double, triple, quadruple uh, at, with just another $100 an ounce. Uh, per and uh, you know throw throw some market sentiment in there throw some momentum in there and uh, you know there's your there's your kids college tuition right there Byron King thank you very much for the time good to talk with you thank yeah. you